All right, hey, welcome. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at Rewise and using it in conjunction with the Strata collections and the Reaper projects and subprojects within there and giving you an idea about how if you were using some of these Strata collections for your interactive design and your WISE projects, how you could very easily get the sounds from the Reaper projects into your WISE project with very, very little friction in a way that ultimately makes a lot of sense and is super flexible, uh, honestly, very seamless. I was very impressed with how easy RealWise was to use. Uh, at face value, there's not a whole lot of clutter in the interface. Everything's very clear. Once you kind of get the hang of doing it a couple of times. Um, so hopefully walking you through it a little bit should be helpful and kind of get you started with using it. All right, so the first thing as far as Rewise is concerned is getting it installed, right? So uh, if you don't have Reapack installed already, you're gonna wanna install Reapack. So go to the Reapack website and get that installed. This is gonna be the easiest way to manage and make sure that Rewise is up to date from this point forward. So once you have Reapack, once you have Reaper opened up, you can go to Extensions, Reapack, and then Import Repositories. And then this box should pop up and then here, is where you can add the repository for Rewise. That's what it is, you can see it on screen, but there's most likely probably a link or this information and description somewhere um, nearby this video that you should be able to also get this repository from if you prefer to just copy and paste it. So there's the repository, I'm gonna click OK. And then it's going to add it, install, and of course it's gonna prompt you to say one or more Reaper extensions were installed. So I'll have to restart and that whole th thing. Okay, so click okay. And then, you know, I'll go ahead and restart Reaper. Okay, so Reaper is back opened pretty much. And now we have this extension right here. So there's Rewise. So the first thing is that you actually do need a specific version of WISE or a, like a minimum. So it, at minimum, you have to have WISE 2019.1 installed, uh, which I'm definitely going to be pushing that boundary because that's what I actually am only able to run on this particular machine. So I'm running, um, what version do I have here? So yeah, I'm actually right there on the cusp. I'm running this particular version of WISE, so 2019.2.3. Again, that's like the last version I think that would actually run on my machine, um, or at least on this machine. All right, so the preference that you need to make sure is turned on is if you go to project and then user preferences, you wanna have this turned on, enable wise authoring API. So that needs to be checked for this to work also. And then mine's already there, but you would click okay. And that should be it as far as setting up the actual wise project making sure that all those prerequisites are met. So I'm here inside the movement servo stutter, some project, the robotic collection, which is again, is a lot of material that I'm using. I'm gonna go ahead and open up Rewise. It's the first thing here under my extensions. And here's what it looks like. So right now it's kinda, there's already some things pulled up down here in the bottom, but just to kinda go over what we're looking at, so we have our project path and then our wise structures up here at the top, right? So there's essentially where my uh, wise project is. It's gonna be what's open right now. Uh, so important thing, if you know, if I didn't have my wise project open, you probably wouldn't see anything here at all. Um, so the fact that we're even seeing anything, if you open it up and you have your wise project open, this is a good sign that it means everything technically should be working. So because I have something here, it's actually basically showing me a preview down here. When I actually would end up with if I rendered something right now or if I did a transfer right now. So if I actually remove these, which I probably will do. There's also some options here for conflict resolution. So if you already have existing sound names, what it should do, um, whether it should you know use the existing, create new or replace. Um, and then also when to apply templates that you might have. Let's say I wanna create a virtual folder inside my WISE project. Uh, what am I actually going to use to name that virtual folder? Right now it's actually using the project wildcard to determine what this virtual folder inside of my WISE project is going to be. So that actually kind of makes sense. I'll keep that. And you can see down here in the preview, 
movement servo stutter. So it's just going off of the actual project name inside of Reaper right there. So we can see how that's reflected. Uh, as far as audio files, let's say, because obviously we're going to have some sounds in there, right? So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a new lane. And let's see, what is this going to be? Let's determine what it's going to be to start with. Let's say we want, um, I'll just, our, I guess a random container is always, you know, it's always a good place to start. And I'm going to have to move this down. So there's, this is kind of a strange thing I had to get used to because your inclination is that you want to just click and move these, drag them, but there's actually an up and down button right here. So I have to move that down. So there, that moves it down. So now I'm kind of building what's gonna go inside this random container. So what is going to constitute the random container? Let's see what kind of options we might have. Project settings, definitely in there. So maybe this could be maybe track, right? Let's see how that works. So there, right now it's using composite for this, I'll just go ahead and um, let's call it something. I'll just call it, um, let's call it servos, right? That's fine. And then we need to actually figure out, you know, based on what sounds or regions I have selected, probably we'll make those our uh, actual sound effects. So let's go ahead and add another object for that. And this one is going to be sound as effects. I'm gonna have to move that down for this to work. And then here, I'll go ahead and use another wild card. So I'm gonna make this project settings, we'll make this region. Okay, and there you can see, it has selected what I actually have in my region manager right now, fast, small, O3. And I should change based on what I have selected. So if I select all of them, there you can see now it has all of those versions of the fast, small setup. How this is actually working, is not too complex. It's basically Rio Wise is just looking at what's inside our render to file menu. It's seeing what regions I have selected or basically what Reaper is about to render. So it's really more most reliant on what this number is right here. So it's saying render six files. And then it's basically reading what are those six files that are about to be rendered? And then that's what's populating and what's showing us inside of the interface. If I wanna pull this into the WISE project, pretty simple, I'll just go ahead and hit transfer to WISE. Okay, so it's gonna give me an import summary, how many objects were created, which audio files were imported. If I wanna see the details, I could do this. And it actually tells me exactly what happened here. Let me go ahead and take a look at the WISE project. All right, so there's my virtual folder. If I open it up, let's see what we have. So there's the random container for servos, which I named, and then there they all are. So we should have our different variations. Play kind of as you might expect them to inside of a random container like that. Okay, so let's take a look, maybe a potentially more advanced way of doing something like this or using Rio WISE. So a different way, rather than just selecting the regions that I want from the, um, from the region marker manager window over on the right side, would be to use the region matrix, which is kind of a little bit more intimidating sometimes for newer users, but I'll kind of give you a little bit of experience kind of using it. Before what we are basically were doing was just rendering the composite. So we're rendering this track right here and our variations that we were getting inside of that random container were just the different takes or versions of the sound. So slow one, two, three, four, five, so on. But what if I wanted to maybe make three random containers? Maybe I wanna randomize the servo movements, randomize the wearing, and then randomize the pneumatics. So I'm really getting very, very different versions of the sound uh, each and every time uh, on a whole other level, right? So kind of be having to select where we want to render the output files. But I'm going to open Rewise, okay? And actually, you know what? I may need to select these first. So let's say we want to render the slow, small, one, two, three, four, and five, and six, right? And I want to render out basically the output of what these tracks are. So these are our tracks right here. So 
O1 basic layer, O2 details layer. These are the these are the tracks. I want to render the output of that. And I have to select that for all of the variations that I want. Okay, so if I only want to render that track, then I could stop there. But I want to also render this track and the pneumatics as well. Okay, so basically I'm going to be rendering the output of three tracks and I'm going to be rendering six variations for each of those tracks. Okay, so let's see how many files are in the render output menu. So that's going to be 18 files. Okay, now Rewise can look at that. Okay, and this is totally not what I want at the moment, but we have a start here. So there's the virtual folder, and then I'm going to add another random container. And I'm going to make this, instead of naming it like I did last time, I'll make this based on track. Okay. And I have to move that down. So this still kind of looks like a bit like a mess, but let's go ahead and add another object. And this will be our sound effects. And then this is going to be based on region. Okay. And I'll move that down. So now you can see what we have down here in the preview. So we have the virtual folder for the project name. And then each of my tracks is named based on the, or I'm sorry, each of my random containers is based on the name of the track. So layer one and down the line, and then each of the variations contained within is going to be that slow, small. So that will have all the same name in there. You could maybe play with that if you wanted to, but let's go ahead and transfer this and see what this ends up being like. All right, so here we are back in the WISE project. And there's my layers, okay? So here, this should just be the servos. And then this should just be the wearing. In this case, it's kind of like a metal clunk sound. And then here should be the pneumatic. All right, so that should be about it. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how the RearWise Reaper extension is gonna be especially useful for the strata collections and the way that the strata collections are organized to be able to render out and quickly transfer a lot of your files inside of these projects. So I'll be using it a little bit more in the interactive design video if you wanna see, you know, uh, RioWise in a more practical application, uh, be sure to check that out. Also, be sure to like and subscribe, that way you stay up to date and you can see new videos as they come out and all the exciting content we have to go with them. If you have any questions, you can feel free to leave questions in the comment section. We'll try to answer them as we're able. So uh, thanks again, and hopefully it was enjoyable, and we'll see you in the next one.